The Taliban have banned women from universities in Afghanistan, sparking international condemnation and despair among young people in the country. The Higher Education Minister announced the regression on Tuesday, saying it would take immediate effect. In Kabul, female students have told the BBC about their anguish. They destroyed the only bridge that could connect me with my future, one Kabul University student said. How can I react? I believe that I could study and change my future or bring the light to my life, but they destroyed it. Another student told the BBC she was a woman who had lost everything. She had been studying Sharia Islamic law and argued the Taliban's order contradicted the rights that Islam and Allah have given us. They have to go to other Islamic countries and see that their actions are not Islamic, she told the BBC. The United Nations and several countries have condemned the order, which takes Afghanistan back to the Taliban's first period of rule when girls could not receive formal education. The UN Special Rapporteur to Afghanistan said it was, a new low further violating the right to equal education and deepens the erasure of women from Afghan society. The US said such a move would, come with consequences for the Taliban. The Taliban cannot expect to be a legitimate member of the international community until they respect the rights of all in Afghanistan, said Secretary of State Antony Blinken in a statement. No country can thrive when half of its population is held back. Western countries have demanded all year that the Taliban improve female education if they wish to be formally recognized as Afghanistan's government. However in neighboring Pakistan, the foreign minister said while he was disappointed by the Taliban's decision, he still advocated engagement. I still think the easiest path to our goal, despite having a lot of setbacks when it comes to women's education and other things, is through Kabul and through the interim government, said Bailawa Bhutto Zardari. The last thing they could do. The Taliban had promised a softer rule after seizing power last year following the US withdrawal from the country. However the hardline Islamists have continued to roll back women's rights and freedoms in the country. There has been opposition to this stance from more moderate officials, and analysts say this issue has been a point of factional division all year. Yet on Tuesday, the Education Ministry said its scholars had evaluated the university curriculum and environment, and attendance for girls would be suspended until a suitable environment was provided. It added that it would soon provide such a setting and citizens should not be worried. However in March, the Taliban had promised to reopen some high schools for girls but then cancelled the move on the day they were due to return. The crackdown also follows a wave of new restrictions on women in recent months. In November, women were banned from parks, gyms and public baths in the capital. A university lecturer and Afghan activist in the US said the Taliban had completed their isolation of women by suspending university for them. This was the last thing the Taliban could do. Afghanistan is not a country for women but instead a cage for women, Humera Kateri told the BBC. The Taliban had just three months ago allowed thousands of girls and women to sit university entrance exams in most provinces across the country. But there were restrictions on the subjects they could apply for, with engineering, economics, veterinary science and agriculture blocked and journalism severely restricted. Prior to Tuesday's announcement, universities had already been operating under discriminatory rules for women since the Taliban takeover in 2021. There were gender-segregated entrances and classrooms, and female students could only be taught by women professors or old men. However, women were still getting education. 
Several women have told the BBC they gave up after the Taliban regained rule because of too many difficulties. Issue splits Taliban. There has been speculation for over a month now that the Taliban government would ban university education for women. One female student predicted it a few weeks ago. One day we will wake up and they will say girls are banned from universities, she had said. And so, while many Afghans might have expected that sooner or later this decision would be taken, it still comes as a shock. Last month women were barred from parks, gyms, and swimming pools. In March this year, the Taliban government did not deliver on its commitment to open secondary schools for girls. From conversations with Taliban leaders over the past year, it is evident that there is disagreement within the Taliban on the issue of girls' education. Off the record, some Taliban members have repeatedly said they are hopeful and working to try and ensure girls get an education. Girls were allowed to sit for graduation exams for secondary schools two weeks ago, in 31 of Afghanistan's 34 provinces, even though they haven't been allowed to be in school for more than a year. That provided a glimmer of hope, which has now been extinguished. Taliban bans women and girls from attending universities in Afghanistan. The Taliban's de facto authorities on Tuesday banned women and girls from attending universities and from getting higher education in, according to the letter released by the Taliban's Ministry of Higher Education. Tuesday's order, which is effectively immediately, completed all the restrictions the Taliban imposed on Afghan women's life in the 1990s, taking Afghanistan and Afghan women nearly three decades back. Based on cabinet decision education for women is suspended until further notice, reads the statement tweeted by ministry spokesman Hafiz Hashimi. The decision should be implemented immediately. The Taliban captured power over 15 months ago and immediately deprived girls of their fundamental rights by banning secondary education for grades 6 and above. But women were allowed to attend universities in a gender-segregated class. No country in the world currently recognizes the Taliban government. Rumors of closing universities have been circulating on Afghan social media since a new leader was appointed for the Ministry of Higher Education position. Malawi Nada Muhammad is considered a Taliban hardliner and was picked by the Supreme Leader for the position. In a statement Tuesday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that the U.S. condemns in the strongest terms the Taliban's indefensible decision to ban women from universities, keep secondary schools closed to girls, and continue to impose other restrictions on the ability of women and girls in Afghanistan to exercise their human rights and fundamental freedoms. No other country in the world bars women and girls from receiving an education, Blinken said. Ambassador Robert Wood, alternative U.S. representative for special political affairs, also issued a response to the Taliban's decision at a United Nations Security Council briefing. The United States condemns in the strongest terms this absolutely indefensible position. The Taliban cannot expect to be a legitimate member of the international community until they respect the rights of all Afghans, especially the human rights and fundamental freedoms of women and girls. We will continue to work with this council to speak with one voice on this issue. Fazia Kufi, a member of parliament in the Republic government, spoke with CBS News and called the decision tragic. Kufi also warned the world to get serious about the Taliban. Since one year, the Taliban have continuously made their restrictions tougher every day on women but in return, they get a lot of political support and privilege from the world," Kufi said. There is no political pressure and they get $40 million every week, and why should they care about human rights and women rights? Kufi also told CBS News, I think it is time for the world, before another 9-11 happens, to get serious on this issue and impose sanctions on Taliban individuals. 
A woman named Shamsia, who wanted to be referred to by her first name only, is attending a government-run university. She said her worst nightmare is to be banned from the university. It was my every night nightmare, she told CBS News. And today, I can see that nightmare in daylight with my eyes open. Pamela Falk contributed reporting from the United Nations.